Today we're going to be talking about a problem that I found with the fuel gauges, uh, the aftermarket one versus the OEM one. I have an OEM set, uh, gauge here and an aftermarket there, and they're all the same. Uh, the problem I'm going to describe is a uh, problem with the needle dragging on the back side of the speedo on the top and the bottom bezel here, been behind right there like that. So what I found was that the gauge needle protrudes out further than the stops All right, I've got it positioned here, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. If you'll look at this surface and that surface and then do an alignment with your eyeball, you'll see that this needle, the needle right down through here, is back behind this, we'll call it a, a stop, this surface and this surface. And then there's this surface and this surface right here, those two. They keep the gauge away from the face of the speedo here and up there. So the dilemma that we have is that the, all the aftermarket gauges that I've worked with now, about 10 of them, the needle up in here protrudes out a lot further than the OEM needle. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. If you can sight down across here and right in there, you'll see what I'm talking about. This needle is back far enough. I've adjusted it or bent it to be back. It was actually protruding past the square right here. Using that by, oh, maybe a 32nd to a 16th of an inch. And the same thing with the bottom part of the needle hanging out, which will drag on that bezel on the back side. So here's what an OEM gauge looks like across that, that level plane. If you look at the distance from here to the needle, you'll see that it's back. Oh about an eighth of an inch and also how the needle is recessed behind these plates here. See it by quite a bit. All right. So <clears throat> what we'll see is when I put a gauge in there that you're, you're okay over in here on, on the empty side and the full side, but as the needle swings across, through here, it's going to be behind that bezel like that. So you can see how it's behind it. So what you have to do, which is really, it's difficult to do, is you have to use dental tools and you have to end up hooking in right under this point and bending that down just a little bit not bending the whole arm then after you get that tucked down this needle is going to hit the the uh, gauge face here then you hold it like that and you bend the needle back out just a little bit. So basically what you're doing is you're making kind of a, a, 
a, a Z going across, across, then down, and then out like that. I can show you how it uh, would drag going across if it was not far enough away. So we'll pause here a second and I'll. Okay, this is going to be kind of difficult to see, and I haven't got a good way of getting a, a picture on. But if you look right in here uh, on your car, if you see an aftermarket cinder rubbing against this, or or right up in there, right there. Then you'll you may see it hang up, and if it's real, if it's really rubbing, it'll hang up. It just doesn't have enough power to to move it. So you'll have to uh, take a look at it and see if you're going to need to do some adjustment. It's really a bummer, but uh, I found uh, two gauges that would actually hang up enough that. Uh, it would, uh, you know, be reading improperly. So, this kind of concludes uh, this video, and I hope that y'all don't run into the problem, but if you do, you'll be able to identify it and correct it. Thanks for watching.